There is a topic that so many people are worried about on the GRE, but honestly speaking, it's actually one of the easiest out there. It's got a scary name, standard deviation, but it's actually a very simple concept at its heart. In this video, I'm gonna show you the main ways in which it's tested and throw in a couple of secrets about standard deviation along the way. But first, let's talk about its name, standard deviation. Really, I think its name contains a clue about what it represents. Standard deviation is a measure of how spread out the results are away from the mean. Think of it as like an average or a standard measure of the spread or the deviation away from the mean. So deviation is how much each result is away from the mean. And the word standard just means it's the average of the deviations. Now I know many students are worried about this formula, the formula for standard deviation that they might have looked up or seen in the guide. But honestly, in all my years of tutoring the GRE, I have never seen a real exam question testing your use of this actual formula. It certainly tests whether you understand the concept of standard deviation, but not whether you can actually use the formula. So I really don't want you to worry about it. I am gonna do an example at the end of the video, just in case, but honestly, that shouldn't be the focus of your revision for standard deviation. Instead, I'm gonna show you the much, much more common and realistic ways in which it's going to be tested. The one bit of this formula that I do want you to notice is that bit inside the absolute values. That's the distance or the difference between each result and the mean. The X with the little bar represents the mean value. Why is it important to notice that part of the formula? Well, here's one of the common ways the GRE tries to trick you. If I add five to all the values in a set, what happens to the standard deviation? It actually doesn't change at all because the difference between each value and the mean is not gonna change if all the values go up by five. All the values are five higher and therefore the mean is five higher and therefore the difference between the values and the mean won't change. So as you're probably noticing, the standard deviation is a statement about the collection of results, not one result in particular, which brings me to my first secret. The standard deviation of a set has nothing to do with the median. I see this tested all the time. But think about it, the median is just a single result in the middle. The standard deviation is an average amount of spread of all the results. So you can't use one to find out the other. For some reason, the GRE tests this quite a lot. The standard deviation has nothing to do with the median and you can't find out anything about either from each. Secret number two, the range tells you nothing about the standard deviation of a set unless the range is zero. Imagine we had a range that wasn't zero. Say the question said the range of a set of values is 10. What's the standard deviation? We could not work that out just from the range. The range only tells us the biggest result minus the smallest result. But a standard deviation is a measure of the average spread of all the results. So the range only tells you about the difference between two particular results, not about all the results in the middle and how spread out they are. So the range tells us nothing, unless the range is zero. What does it mean if the range of a set of values is zero? It means every single value is the same, three, 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 three. And if every single value is the same, what is the standard or the average deviation from the mean? Zero, there is no deviation from the mean. All the results are the same as the mean. Therefore, if the range is zero, the standard deviation is also zero. Before we get onto a real GRE question, I just want to show you standard deviation on a graph. Now I'm gonna be covering normal distribution in another video, but I just wanna bring up standard deviation on a bell curve just quickly now to prepare you. If you look at this graph, you can see we've got the mean in the middle and then standard deviations coming out from that mean, both upwards to the right and downwards to the left. So just one quick bit on word usage that you might see in the GRE and it confuses some people. 
if a question asks how many results are within one standard deviation of the mean, that means within one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below the mean. Anything between one standard deviation below and one standard deviation above is said to be within one standard deviation of the mean. Within two standard deviations of the mean would be anything from two below the mean and two standard deviations above the mean. What you're probably really wondering at this point is how is it actually tested? So let's get to this question. Pause the video, have a read of the question, and if you like, you can attempt the question before I explain how to do it. So we have a mean of 32.5 and a standard deviation of 7.1. And they want to know how many standard deviations above the mean is a score of 48. Is it one standard deviation above the mean? two standard deviations above the mean, 1.6, what is it? This question comes from the official ETS math review, and it might have intimidated you before, but hopefully not now. The first thing we need to do is calculate how much higher that result is than the mean. So we have a score of 48. How much higher is that than the mean of 32.5? If you take them away, you get 15.5. But now the question becomes, how many standard deviations is that if one standard deviation is 7.1? Well, that result, 48, is 15.5 above the mean. And one standard deviation is 7.1. So what we do is we divide 15.5 by 7.1 to see how many standard deviations that is. The result is almost certainly going to be a decimal. If we do 15.5 divided by 7.1, we can see that the result is 2.18. And that means that a result of 48 is 2.18 standard deviations above the mean. And that is the correct answer. And so many students would get that wrong simply by being too intimidated about this concept of standard deviation and never really looking into how to do it. You thought you were done, but I want to give you a question of my own based on this data to see if you can do it. So back to the same question, same data. Let's say Philip got a rating of 26. How many standard deviations below the mean is that? You can pause the video and have a go at yourself if you like. If we find the difference between the mean of 32.5 and that rating that Philip got of 26, we can see the gap 32.5 minus 26 is 6.5. But how many standard deviations is that? Well, same as last time, we do 6.5 divided by 7.1. We divide by the standard deviation to find out how many standard deviations that is. The answer is 0.915 or 0.92. So Philip's result was 0.92 standard deviations below the mean. Now that's more or less the essentials of standard deviation, but for those of you who are really obsessed and want to get into the topic a bit more, I'm gonna actually calculate the standard deviation of a set of a few numbers using the formula. Again, I've never seen this in the real exam, but you might as well do it and learn it for fun. By the way, if you're liking the video, please leave a like, a comment, and a question. It massively boosts the rating of the video and gets out to the masses. So if we had a set of numbers, four, five, seven, 11, 13, how would we actually calculate the standard deviation if we were asked to and someone put a gun to our heads? Well, we would in this case use the formula. First, we calculate the mean, the X bar, the mean result. We do that by adding them all up and dividing by how many terms. If we add them up, that's 40. 40 divided by five terms gives us eight. So the mean result is eight. I'm gonna be quite quick here, so try and keep up. Now we calculate the difference between each result and that mean. The difference between four and the mean of eight is four. The difference between five and that mean of eight is three, and you go through. 
you should get five different results, each one representing the difference between each result and the mean. Then we square all of those results. So for that first answer, the difference between four and eight was four. So we square the answer to get 16. For the second number, five, the difference between five and eight was three. So we square the answer. Three squared is nine. The difference between seven and eight was one. So we square the answer and get one. And we do that for every single term. Then we do the sum. That's that strange symbol on the left, the sigma. We sum up all those different answers. Doing that quickly in my head, I think we get 60. Now we divide by n, which is the number of terms. There were five terms, so we divide that answer of 60 by five to get 12. And finally, we square root. Obviously, you'd have to do that with a calculator as root 12 wouldn't really be an acceptable answer. We get 3.46. So the standard deviation of this small set of numbers is 3.46. And now you really do know everything about the essentials of standard deviation for the GRE. So thank you for watching and have a brilliant day.